What is up, Broncos country and everybody tuning into Mile High Sports? Kim Becker and Cody Rourke here. Obviously, some big news when it comes to the head coach of the Denver Broncos finalizing a deal, perhaps finalized, with Sean Payton. And boy, oh boy, do we hope this is the best option. <laughs> Hoping to see a lot out of this next season, but not getting my hopes too high. Uh, Cody, we've got a couple questions to address here, but we'll keep this one short and sweet. We just kind of want to know. What was going on yesterday with the hiring of Sean Payton? Can you run us through the timeline of Tuesday? I guess it yes. was Tuesday, not yesterday. Yeah, so Tuesday, I mean, for the Broncos, it was, it was crazy because there was a whole bunch of radio silence all throughout this entire head coaching search. There were so many reports coming out, I'd say, over the last three or four weeks that everyone's like, what is there Like, what is there to believe? Like, nothing's coming out of Denver specifically. I mean, we're trying. We're trying to get information out of the Broncos, seeing, hey, what's going on with this? And, and nothing like, George, uh, you know, George Payton, Greg Penner, uh, ownership, they kept things very close to the vest when it came to this head coaching search, and rightfully so, I understand understand that uh but obviously on tuesday it formulated really quickly that the broncos were making a, you know a big effort to get sean payton and what included that i think one of the hangups that's since been reported is that the saints were looking for a massive deal like two first round picks kind of john gruden-esque with you know with tampa way back in the day yeah. and that simply just wasn't something that the broncos were going to do and more so they didn't feel like the value of doing that was there so Ultimately, they settled on the Broncos are center, the 29th overall pick, the first round pick that they had in this year's NFL draft, which they acquired from the Miami Dolphins, which previously belonged to the San Francisco 49ers. They acquired that when they sent Bradley Chubb to Miami. And they sent that over and they sent a 2024 second round pick next year over there. Now, Denver gets Sean Payton, a very, very good coach, a proven winner in the National Football League. Plus, they're also going to be getting a 2024 third round pick back so you know they're still getting some capital back not to mention Denver does possess a first round pick next year as well and you know I, I think this is the cost right essentially you traded Bradley Chubb for Sean Payton and I think for the Broncos that's what they need they needed a proven guy at the head coaching position now obviously as you mentioned I think everybody's reserving their judgment till they see how the Broncos look on the field if they're winning if they look more you know disciplined if they don't look how they looked last year under Nathaniel Hackett I think that's one thing that Broncos fans kind of are, are kind of keeping on but there's excitement in Broncos country there's also some skepticism and rightfully so I think both fan base you know both sides of the fan base are okay with that Absolutely. And of uh, this next question is definitely kind of coattailing on on that last statement you made, Cody, because a lot of people assume we think we've seen the product out on the field last year um, that Russell Wilson is part of this problem. And so, of course, a lot of questions that came out on Tuesday and Wednesday were. Will Russell Wilson be fixed, um, per se, by Sean Payton? Or how do you think that this hire affects Russell Wilson? I know Colin Coward mentioned that, that Russell Wilson knows he needs to be fixed. I don't think Russell Wilson would ever say that. I, no. I know there is that. I, and I don't necessarily believe that Russell Wilson needs fix. I don't think he's broken. I just think that the system that he was in and knowing the information that I know about some of the stuff behind the scenes of the Broncos offense, it's not all on Russ's fault. Now, Russ obviously has to play better, 110%. But I think there's so many people out there in the national media saying this is all Russell Wilson's fault. Everything like now that Nathaniel Hackett has a job with the New York Jets, everyone's saying, yeah, it was, it was not Hackett's fault. It was Russell Wilson's fault. Those of us in Denver that were there every day, we know like there was mutual blame to go around. I think yeah. everybody wants to just point the finger at one guy. Russ has some areas he needs to improve on. Now, obviously, I think he also dealt with some injuries. Not to say that that's an excuse, you know, but he had a torn lat in his throwing shoulder. He also had the hamstring injury, but he, he continued to compete and fight through it. And he just has to make better decisions. Some of the processing stuff that he had last year, that stuff's fixable. But when you don't have an offensive identity, how do you expect to go out there and do things a certain way? You know, that that's the thing is Denver never really had a great game plan on the offensive side of the ball. Everything was just kind of dysfunctional. That's a, a word that was used to me by a Broncos offensive player uh, in the offseason about what kind of happened with the offense last year. There was no – they threw everything out the window that they were working on in training camp by week three and week four of the season. So for Russell Wilson, I think how Sean Payton can come in, obviously for him, 
Peyton has been on the record on some of the appearances that he's done like months ago with, you know, Colin Coward or Fox. And he was asked, like, if you were a coach in Denver, what would you do for Russell Wilson? He said, you know, I'd find a playlist of the greatest hits and I'd design packages around what Russ does really well. But part of it is going to be getting a run game going, right? Running the football, setting things up with the pass, I think takes the most pressure off Russell Wilson. And looking at Sean Payton's history and his track record, I think that's going to be the plan here. Okay. All right. Well, we'll roll right through here. And how does this hiring impact George Payton? There's been some interesting, uh, I guess, th things and talks about the whole <laughs> dynamic in uh, the front office. So how, what, is, what does this mean here? Well, it's a Peyton party in Denver. P A Y T O N P A T O N here. And, and look, I think um, P E Y T O N. That yeah, too. we'll see if Peyton. I, I wonder. I, I do wonder if Peyton will somehow find a way to be involved um, at some point. I mean, like I said, he's in he's in constant communication with Broncos yeah. ownership. They rely on him. He's got a great relationship with Condoleezza Rice. He's also got a great relationship with George Peyton. So we'll see if Peyton Manning ever sticks his head around Dove Valley even further. Uh, but as it pertains to like George Payton and how the hiring of Sean Payton impacts that, so many people were speculating that George Payton was taking a step back, like his role wasn't as important anymore, which is completely 110% false. Last year, I always think we have to put it in our perspective. The Broncos had no ownership in place. So George Payton, his job as a general manager is to assemble personnel on the football side of things to build a roster that allows them to compete. He had to have elevated responsibilities because there was no ownership. John Elway stepped away. Joe Ellis was stepping away. So George Payton had to lead a head coaching search, which you know ultimately they landed on Nathaniel Hackett, which we can all acknowledge was a huge mistake by Payton and a huge mistake by the Broncos. But they've now since rectified that. Peyton's role doesn't change. He's still going to be assembling the roster, but he's doing it in collaboration with Sean Payton. I must mention, he did that in collaboration with Nathaniel Hackett. He did that in collaboration with Vic Fangio. So that is, I think, an important thing. And then everybody was making a stir. Oh, George Payton's not going to be involved in second round interviews. Well, guess what? Denver didn't have any second round interviews for candidates. They only had their first round interviews. And George Payton, as it was also reported, was involved in daily conversations, one-on-ones with Sean Payton throughout this entire process. So I think that kind of kills the narrative that George Payton suddenly isn't going to have a role here. I think that he and Sean Payton are going to work really well together. Both will report directly to Greg Penner throughout this process, and Penner will rely a lot on, on obviously, George Payton and Sean Payton. I think this has a chance to be a really good match between these two guys. And I think people tend to forget, when Sean Payton was at New Orleans, he had a GM that he worked alongside and Mickey Loomis throughout his entirety there. So I don't understand the notion that Sean Payton is, is going to be the head coach and the GM. That's not the case. This isn't the New England Patriots. This isn't Bill Belichick. That's something to keep an eye on here. George Payton, very, very involved in his role, very prominent still inside the Broncos front office. All right, let's address one more topic here that is very intriguing and interesting. I don't see it happening, but do you think Vic Fangio is coming back to Denver under <laughs> Sean Payton? <laughs> Uh, you know, this is a very interesting one because when she, before the hiring process even began, like a couple months ago, Adam Schefter came out. Apparently, I sound a lot like Adam Schefter. That's what people say in the comments all the time. <laughs> uh, apparently, Sean Payton was assembling an all star staff, which included Vic Fangio. And the first thing I thought of was like, well, that rules out Sean Payton to Denver because they just fired a couple of years ago, they just fired Vic Fangio from the head coaching job. To me, Vic, like I said, Vic is a terrific coach, a very terrific X's and O's defensive coordinator. However, when he was here in Denver, he did rub a lot of big name people, you know, some some very important players the wrong way because the vibe was do as I say, you know, and it was not like a, it wasn't an environment that was conducive for growth. Right. And we talk about that. You have to have collaboration, you know, in a team setting. And it was Vic's way or the highway, essentially. And that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And, and guys felt like there were times where Vic Fangio, they, they only felt like Vic cared about them as just football players, not as like human beings, which, I, you know, there's guys, and I want to preface this by saying, there's guys in the locker room that didn't have a great experience with Vic Fangio. There's guys in the locker room that liked Vic Fangio, that loved how he did things, and, and you're always going to get something like that. If Vic were to come back to Denver specifically to be the defensive coordinator, I feel like there would have to be like some amends that are, you know, met. Like I said, I don't think Vic is a bad guy. I think Vic no. generally like – He's old school. He's been coaching for a long time. You have to be able to relate with your players. And I think that's one of the things that players were seeking the most from a guy like Vic. 
they got that from Ed Donatel. They, you know, they were able to relate with him really well when he was there. Obviously, he's a defensive coordinator. So for me, it's if Vic's coming back to Denver, there has to be some amends that I feel like are made with some of the you know important guys inside that locker room. And I think that's something to keep an eye on here for the Broncos. Um, in my opinion, I feel like the Broncos defense isn't broken. So why, you know, don't fix it. Like as Euro Evro took Vic Fangio's defensive scheme, made it more aggressive, made it more efficient, and guys loved it. And it was a collaborative, like as Euro Evro is a collaborative coach, probably not gonna get a head coaching job in this cycle. We'll probably be in line to get a head coaching job potentially next year, the year after. So, I mean, if it's not broken, don't fix it. But does a guy like Ajiro ever want to return to Denver considering how things went down with Nathaniel Hackett, who is his best friend? So, so many things to ponder here. Yeah, it'll be interesting, but I can't imagine a Jiro Evero wouldn't want to work under Sean Payton. I mean, again, that's completely just me making assumptions, but when you have a guy come in like that, it would be, I think, great for his career and just great for his growth and development to see how a guy like Sean Payton works. You know, like you said, he knows how to win. It would be under a head coach who's really made a, a statement here, but um, what do I know? But I will say the one thing about Vic Fangio, I just don't think he's at a point in his career where he needs to go to a team that he would have to make amends with. You know what I mean? I mean, I think that there's enough teams that are probably very interested in him. I know there were some last year and he turned down jobs and it just doesn't seem like he's at a point where he would have to come back to Denver and make amends like that. You know, I don't think it'd be something that he would really feel like doing. And I just don't think that, like you said, if it's, if it's not broken, don't fix it, but also why backtrack on something like that? He is a great coach. Yes. They also brought in a head coach last year who they thought would be able to relate to players and have more of that um, personality. And look how that turned out. So I don't think you can get a perfect candidate no. candidate that's 100% <laughs> well-rounded and all of that. But I, I don't think that it's necessary for Vic Fangio to come back to the Denver Broncos. Yeah, and he's got interest from the Miami Dolphins. I know yeah. he's eyeing the San Francisco job potentially there under with Kyle Shanahan with D'Amico Ryans taking the Houston Texans job. And, you know, I think for for Denver, it's like Azuro Evero, I think is that perfect guy for the guys on that defensive side yeah. of the ball. He, he, he epitomizes, I think, the fine line between, you know, caring about his players but also knowing when to flip the switch and to get the best out of them. He's mm -hmm. very good at that. Uh, players love a zero Evero. So we'll see how things play out here with the Broncos defensive coordinator job. I'm sure we'll find out more information potentially by the time this releases and premieres live for Broncos fans, or maybe even next week when Peyton is expected to meet with the media. So there's a lot on the line here for the Denver a lot Broncos. going on a lot going on all right Cody well thank you so much we just wanted to hop on here and get a quick update and hear what you knew about the whole situation so I appreciate your time thank you to everybody tuning in here at Mile High Sports we will make sure to keep you updated and make sure that you are all paying attention to milehighsports.com Cody is writing all of the content you could possibly want when it comes to the Denver Broncos and their current situation so uh, don't forget to head on over there when you ever want to Cody, thank you so much. Thanks, Kim.